Elon Musk may look like a sweet and chill guy who's taken over Twitter, but when it comes to managing his business, he's pretty serious. As you'd expect a man who's made billions in the profession as his employee, no matter how good you are at your job, if you've been accused of shady stuff, be ready for some heat. In this video, let's see how a Tesla official has returned to a new role, starting the new vice president. Musk, the richest guy in the world, is going to get richer. For example, his Twitter takeover. But what are his employees at Tesla and SpaceX up to? We don't know about all of them, though we do know what one of them is doing right now, and that's Omid Afshar. This guy, who's been absent from Tesla's plant for weeks now because of an investigation, has been named the vice president of SpaceX. That might sound a little shady to you, considering the dude's been under investigation, but it turns out all is well with him. A LinkedIn profile photo of Afshar showed us Starship's launch and the catch tower at Starbase. The rocket's super heavy booster is supposed to land while the orbital Starship spacecraft will re-enter the Earth's atmosphere around 90 minutes later to splash down many miles off a Hawaiian coast. Well, that's what the regulatory documents of SpaceX filed last year, and now he's in charge of all that. He used to lead operations at Tesla's new plant in Texas and is now at SpaceX working on Musk's ambitious Starship Deep Space Rocket. That's what we've heard through multiple sources, at least. Oh, and he's been named Vice President. Next up, trust the judgment. A guy being investigated earlier was MIA from the job and was given a place next to the boss. Does that sound okay to you all? Let's call a spade a spade. It's weird as hell, but we trust the big man's judgment and know that if he's been hired, there has to be a solid reason for it. Starship is Elon's baby, and he's done all he could to get it up and to run. Now that it's going well, he'd hand it to capable people, and Afshar seems like the right choice. But how do we know he's now in that position at Starship's production company? This is all according to the two people who asked not to be identified as they revealed private information. They wouldn't want to get fired, and we wouldn't want them to be fired either. We know that he's working at SpaceX, but it's unknown whether he's working at both companies. Two people said the employee hadn't been seen at the Austin, Texas plant for many weeks. Reporters have been trying to get him to comment on the whole situation, but he hasn't responded to any request for comment. Neither did any of the representatives of SpaceX and Tesla. Even the man behind his promotion hasn't confirmed or denied a thing. Moving on, the fixers LinkedIn. So they're keeping everything everything under wraps and will only say anything once they're ready. But here we are, letting you know about everything in advance. As you all know, Musk is the CEO of both the electric vehicle company Tesla and is leading rocket launch and satellite operations at SpaceX. Both companies have significant operations in Texas, including Tesla's headquarters in Austin and SpaceX's launch site in the Gulf Coast community of Boca Chica. We're not sure if Omid is back with the company, but we know that his LinkedIn profile still listed his job description as working at Tesla, with a cowboy emoji, where his job title should have been. Things weren't looking very good for the fixer when he was under scrutiny in a private and internal investigation at the automotive company for his role in planning to purchase some construction materials that were incredibly hard to find. Some other employees were fired as well and were part of that investigation. Investigation. He was also expected to leave the electric vehicle company, which was confirmed by people who knew about this matter at the time. It still isn't clear whether he was moved as a result of the investigation or it was just a random move. It couldn't be random, right? We all know that Musk has a long history of shuffling executives from one part of his empire to another. Lastly, the shuffle. He moved him if he thought Omid would prove to be more productive elsewhere, but were his intentions intentions as pure as we're making them out to be, and that he wants the world to see, only he and his vice president can know the answer to this. We know he has employees working in multiple companies of his, 
just like Charles Kuman, who is Vice President of Material Engineering at both Tesla and SpaceX. And the engineers at his car company are now helping him overhaul Twitter. He likes to get work done and uses all his employees to their maximum potential. So that might be his only reason for appointing Afshar as the new VP. But there's a possibility that this is some sort of a cover-up. Because, as you'd remember back in 2021, when his guy had faced the axe from his job at Tesla after the suspicious purchase of special glass, the now VP did say that it was to be used by the big boss for a secret personal project. Oh, are we about to see our version of Iron Man? Because he fits the criteria too. Wealthy, talented, creative, and a playboy. We just never know what that special glass will be used for. But we know that what looked like an axe back then was possibly not an axe. And he might have been just shifting him to a company that Musk thought he would be better suited at. Possibly. Now that we know what's happening with Omid Afshar and where he's been relocated, let's move on and talk about how SpaceX has added data restrictions for Starlink power users. First off, data issues. Elon has now introduced restrictions to its Starlink internet service to limit the data drains of power users. And we get that. Imagine trying to use Starlink and you keep running out of data. They said they'd added this new policy on data so that it'll result in slower speeds for customers who use just one terabyte of data per month. But that's during peak hours. SpaceX wrote in the email that the change was due to a few users consuming unusually high amounts of data. As we told you, this was introduced to ensure they fight against the data drains. This peak hour they're talking about happens between 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., according to the email sent to Starlink users on November 4th. A copy of it was also sent to certain media companies who could see it in writing and confirm that this was the case. While SpaceX still promises unlimited data for its users, its service now has two tiers. One is basic and the other is priority. Next up, priority and basic access. Automatically, the users will be offered priority access with the fastest speed. But after they've passed that new threshold, they'll be downgraded to basic access. SpaceX wrote on its website, in times of network congestion, users with basic access may experience slower speeds and reduced performance compared to priority access, which may result in degradation or unavailability of certain third-party services or applications. Bandwidth intensive applications, such as streaming videos, are most likely to be impacted. A team at SpaceX involved in Starlink wrote in the email that this change is because certain people are using high data more than normal. It also said that less than 10% of the service's customers use more than one terabyte of data each month. It now also shows in the Starlink service that used to advertise previously about no data caps. They've now updated their policy and the online messaging to say that there are no hard data caps while pointing to the new policy. Last of all, the sky is not the limit. This priority system is applied to its residential customers in Canada and the USA, who pay $110 per month. Not just them, but all of its business and maritime customers, who pay around $500 and $5,000 a month. It also offers a whole new revenue opportunity for SpaceX too. How? We told you about the whole priority access idea, right? So if you continually use that beyond the terabyte threshold, it'll cost you 25 cents per extra gigabyte for residential users and $1 per gigabyte for business customers. To this day, SpaceX has launched about 2,500 Starlink satellites into orbit, and the service had around 500,000 subscribers in June. They, of course, keep increasing every day with the way Starlink and SpaceX are moving forward by selling their services to businesses, residents, aviation, RV, and maritime customers. That's it from our side for today. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or thoughts about Tesla official Omid Afshar turning up at SpaceX in a new Starship role after the investigation, let us know in the comments below. See you at the next one.